uh, in amongst the lineup of very distinguished and talented entertainers. And it's enormously encouraging to see so many people taking a, a very good interest in Scotland's national poet. Susan mentioned earlier about Mr Burns' love for we animals and all things bright and natural. And that's especially true for the piece that I'm going to read for you this evening. Um, about three or four hundred years just prior to the birth of Robert Burns was a very extraordinary and courageous lady from Scotland, Betty Queen of Scots, Mary Stuart in fact. And because of the agreement of the Grand Alliance between Scotland and France to protect against the English invasion at that time, she spent most of her early years from uh, childhood right into uh, the years of a teenager in the country of France at the French court. And uh, during that time, she developed an enormous love for all things natural, just like Robert Burns. Now, at the very last stages of her life, when she spent those harrowing years in exile and locked up in a castle in England somewhere, she had nothing but her memories and imagination to entertain her. And at that time, that's when she recollected all of the various thoughts and beautiful things that she saw in nature at that time. And I think it's enormously um, intelligent of Robert Burns to have captured the love of nature from the empathy of this woman in this very challenging situation in this lyrical verse that I'm about to read you by now. The woman that she refers to in this particular uh, poem is of course referring to uh, her sister Elizabeth I and her son that is also referred to in the poem is referred to James the, the Sixth of Scotland which turned out to be James the First of the United Kingdom. So here we go. Now nature hangs her mantle green on every blooming tree and spreads her sheets of daisies white out over the grassy lea. Now Phoebus tears the crystal streams and glads the azure skies, but naught can glad the weary wit that fast endurance lies. Now blooms the lily by the bank, the primrose down the brain, the hawthorn's budding in the glen, and milk-white as the slain. The meanest hind in fair Scotland may rove the streets among, but I, the Queen of Scots Scotland, must lie in prison strong. I was the Queen of Bonnie France, where happy I have been. So lightly raise I in the morn, and blithe lay down at even. And I'm the sovereign of Scotland, and many a traitor there. Yet here I lie in foreign hands, and never ending care. But as for thee, for false woman, my sister and my foe, grim vengeance yet shall wet a sword that through thy shawl shall go. The weeping blood in women's breast was never known to thy nor the balm that drops on wounds of war for a woman's pitying eye. My son, my son, may kinder stars upon thy fortune shine, and may those pleasures gild thy reign that never would blink on mine. God keep thee from thy mother's woes, or turn thy hearts to thee, and where thou meet'st thy mother's friend, remember him for me. Oh, soon to me will summer suns, Nemeer, light up the morn. Nemeer, to me the autumn winds wave over the yellow corn. And in the narrow house of death, let winter round me rave, and the next flowers that deck the spring bloom on my peaceful. Great. 